help, I'm alive, my heart keeps beating like a hammer. Hard to be soft. All right. Tough to be tender. Welcome to another episode of Misfits on Vinyl. My name is Spencer Strager. I'm an actor, comedian, and one of your titties. <laughs> My name is Aaron, and I am also uh, one of those. Uh, <laughs> how you feeling, Spencer? Dude, I'm feeling so much better now. Yeah, get him glad. Yeah, I'm back on my antidepressants. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's a start. Me, raw dog in life was not the move. <laughs> Like at all? I think as you're approaching thirty, you'd know that by now. You would think, but dude, I don't. I don't learn things very easily. No, I I, I usually. Take a few <laughs> That's one thing I've learned about you. Yeah, you don't learn. I don't learn. No. I make the same mistake multiple times. Yeah, and then I'm like. It's like I grab a hammer and I hit myself in the head and I'm like, why does my head hurt? <laughs> Some people call that stupidity. Yeah. And other uh, people call it silent genius. Yes. And the, the, I, the silent is that I never <laughs> said anything fucking The smart. silent part is no one ever says that. <laughs> That's the silent part. <laughs> How are you doing, Aaron? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. No, same old. Been good. Did you uh, did you bet on the Super Bowl? I did not. I bet on the Super Bowl. Did you win? I won money on the Super Bowl. Nice. I I, I lost on the over under, but I yes. won on the uh, Kansas City Chiefs winning. <laughs> nice. So that I, was all that mattered. I had the 49ers. Nice. Um, yeah. So no, it was good. We had a bit of a shindig. Um, my dad's birthday was like the week before the Super Bowl, so Ooh. he decided to have a Super Bowl birthday party uh, combination. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was like me, my family, and a bunch of Newfoundlanders that don't know anything about football. <laughs> <laughs> and, like my dad, I swear I've never seen him ever watch a game of football, and he was like calling the game like he, he knew what was going on. <laughs> He's like, they should have run the ball. They should have they should have kicked the other way. Dude, blah, I feel blah. like that's just like a dad thing, though. Yeah, no, I was laughing in overtime. Like, every play, whether it was, like, first and ten, he's like, this is the play that decides the game. <laughs> like, just on fucking repeat. <laughs> Dude, I, I didn't even watch the, the game. I was yeah. just getting the live updates. I was actually super sick when the Super Bowl was happening, so I, I passed out, woke up, and then I was like, they're in overtime? Okay, and then I went back to sleep, and then I woke up, and I got the, like, Play Alberta alert, and it was like, hey, you won. I was like, yay. (laughs) Yeah, I I was thinking about betting on the Super Bowl, but I haven't bet sports in a while, so I have to, like, re-up my account with Play Alberta, and they want me to call their 1-855-555 number or whatever. Ah, yeah, yeah. A lot of effort to lose money. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing. Like, I I did pretty good during, like, the the, uh, Flames playoffs in in, uh, 2022. Yes. Uh, I was doing, doing pretty good then. Uh, up until they started to fucking lose, obviously, and then I, I'm, I'm just a, I don't know, I'm a loyalist, man. I just kept throwing the same amount of money at the Flames, <laughs> and they kept just hurting me. Well, I, I've bet like the fights before and stuff like that, and it's a lot more entertaining when you've like put, you know, like twenty dollars down and you could yeah. win, you know, like two hundred and fifty bucks. It gets a lot more interesting. It, it gets yeah. way more interesting. Yeah. I, I personally I I mean I, I okay the the year that I, I lost the most money on the Super Bowl though, I lost like four hundred dollars in yes. uh this was in twenty fifteen. This was winter twenty fifteen because it was uh, Seahawks and the Patriots and I was a big old Seahawks fan. Oh yes. And then uh was it uh, Malcolm Butler Malcolm Butler? Is that who caught the interception at the... Oh, yeah, the fucking... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, but, dude, I, I, I bet on the coin toss, even, and I lost money on the coin toss. So. I mean, that's 50-50. Uh, yeah. that's, that's sad. Yeah, dude, I lost money on everything that year. That's probably the best gambling bet out there, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have, a, you have a one in two chance of... Well, I mean, I guess you do every game. You have a one in two chance. So to when, you do, when you when you apply that logic, yeah. I mean, but there are there are factors that, yes. that play into it. I don't think there's as many factors with a coin toss. It's true. It's kind of like, is it heads or tails? Yeah, the guy from Hawaii flipped the coin. We had a team from Hawaii come and flip the coin. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah, they were all affected by uh, fires. Oh, right. Yeah. So. I forgot about that. That was something that we cared about before <laughs> the Middle East. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, that did happen. Hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of things that have happened in the past. I, I always think it's funny, like, now, uh, you know, since the pandemic, it seems like every two months there's a new thing. Yes. It's like the biggest thing that everyone has to worry about. Yes. Uh, and uh, I, I honestly stopped caring about any of it so long ago. <laughs> yeah. The world keeps turning. It's all good. The world keeps turning, yeah. dude. Uh, I you know what? My dick still gets hard. That's all that matters. <laughs> I guess so. I can, I can sneeze the happy milk. That's all that matters. <laughs> Don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like that. <laughs> Anyways, how are you doing, Spencer? Dude, I am doing great. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh, I got some shows coming up. Yeah, I was about uh, to say. I uh, Yeah, I guess I should talk about those now. Uh, March 5th, I'm taking over the Laugh Shop. Yeah. Uh, they're doing Tuesday takeovers. They're letting me take over the Laugh Shop. So I got a great show with Brittany Lyson, Corey Mack, and Dale Ward. Nice. Uh, and I also got some surprise guests coming in. Ooh. So, uh, it's going to be really fun. And then on the 22nd, I'm doing two shows. I'm doing, uh, this is in March. Uh, March 22nd, I'm doing Cough Omedy, uh, which is Chris, Chris Whip's show. Nice. And it's in the basement of uh, the Calgary Coffee Roaster Society. Cool. It's a really fucking cool space. And then I'm also doing the show with the waterfront at the rec room that night. Nice. Uh, so, and there's a bunch of other bands uh, as well. And then. You guys linked up after. We hey, linked up. Yeah, dude. nice. Uh, yeah, so that's March 22nd. And then April 12th, I'm in Jasper at uh, the Jasper Inn and Suites. Nice. Uh, we're, we're in the conference room there. Then April 13th, I'm in Airdrie at the Atlas Brewing. And then uh, April 17th, I'm in Grand Prairie at the casino. Damn. So come on out. See me do the jokes. Oh, and that's cool, man. I'm glad you and Tanner linked up and you got to yeah. fulfill your guys' dreams of working together. Yeah, dude. I yeah. was very happy about that. Yeah, cool guys. Yeah, it, they're they're very cool guys. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, a, a shout out to uh, Affiant Records. Yes. Uh, for fucking sliding into our DMs. Yes. Uh, right after I was like, oh, I'm happy to link up with you too. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty sick. Yeah, it was very cool. Very cool. Um, okay, so should we should we hop into the? Uh, let's do the thing. We got a, uh, you know, this is our episodes we do when uh, we're we busy and we <laughs> yeah. don't really have the time to do all the research. And you see, here's the thing: when we do the research, it can take years. Because we have sometimes, to, we sometimes have to, decades. We have to peer review everything that we do. Yeah, we cross reference things. Yes, um, we cite our sources. We cite our sources. Yes, uh, Wikipedia <laughs> is uh, sometimes a source. <laughs> Which is, you know, I was thinking about that recently. I was like, I don't think we should be as upfront about that as we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I seen some video of like Henry Cavill and the guy like said something to him and he's like, "Where'd you find that?" And he's like, "Wikipedia's like." You get your information <laughs> from Wikipedia, and I was like, "Hmm, I base a lot of my facts off of Wikipedia." Well, one of the, what the speaking of Wikipedia, one of the one of the potential guests that we are going to be having on yes. soon um, was doing research for them. <laughs> I was reading the Wikipedia page, <laughs> and at the very end of it, it said. Uh, this person has been known to occasionally edit their own Wikipedia from time to time to uh, make stuff up about their amazing life. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess I can't use this for them then. Uh, I think you still can and just see. Just see what all is yeah, real. Yeah, see what the reaction is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, because it takes uh, so much for us to do our, our research, mm -hmm. uh, it, it can take decades. Uh, uh, we're we're well-learned scholars yes. of music. Yes. Um, I personally, I blow the cello and um, <laughs> like Willie you, you, you fiddle with a you you fiddle with a saxophone. You, you pluck it. She blow me like a cello. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I think Lil Yachty looked up Wikipedia how to play a cello. <laughs> you blow on it. He spelt it with a J though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> blow me like a cello. <laughs> blow me like a cello. Uh, okay, so uh, because it takes so much time, and yes. because we're we're busy, busy folks. Yes. Um, sometimes we do recisodes. Yeah. That's the first one that we've done in a long fucking time. Yeah, I think what was the last one we did was that Matchbox Twenty and uh, Blood Orange. It was. And yeah. that was in June. That was right before uh, I went out to Victoria. Yes. So wow. that was, and that was right when uh, you were going to New York, weren't you? Yes. Yeah. I, I did. <laughs> or was that before you went to? I think it was before I went to New York. Yeah, that was before. Yeah. Yeah. And then we took a break. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. So 
We do rec episodes. You know what the albums are. Yes. We're doing Fantasies by Metric and uh, Sean Desmond's self-titled <laughs> debut. Uh, guess who picked which one? Um, <laughs> put in your answers now at 1-800-555. <laughs> you know, you always keep me on my, my toes with your recommendations. Yeah, I, uh, might have been fucking wild, I will say. Yeah, I know. I like I, I knew who Sean Desmond was and like... You know, like a Canadian Idol way, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's better than a Canadian Idol way. Okay, I would say, I would say, arguably, in the early two thousands, and 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 we'll get into this when we actually get into like some of the info about the album. Yes, but there was actually a lot of stuff that he did on that album that actually did inspire American artists at the same time, like mm. like Nelly and uh, 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 fucking other artists yes They're, it's a good song he's a song and dance man he's a song and dance man look he's uh, you know what he's one that like you'd put on if you're uh it's 2003 uh it's july of 2000 let me let me set the stage for you okay? <laughs> it's july of 2003 yes you're beside kootenai lake okay the sun is setting but it's still really bright out yes the water is very warm yes your babysitter is 16 years old you're eight. Yes. She's playing you this music. Okay. And she's hot. Yeah. And you're eight, so you don't know that. Okay. Um, and you're just drinking your fucking Capri Sun. Yeah. But it came in like that. No, no, it was the Kool Aid one. The Kool Aid Jammer. Kool Aid Jammer. That's yeah, what which it was. color? Uh, I mean, you could either go. I would go green or purple. Okay, personally. you said you said the right one with green. Yeah. I'm more of a green, blue, orange, purple guy. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, who fucking drinks red? Yeah, nobody uh, drinks red. No, no. You got some Cheerios snack mix yes. in a bowl. This is so central, dude. And then and then and then you're just like you're like life is not going to get better than this. Yeah. She's she's literally showing you Resident <laughs> Evil. And in fact, it never got, <laughs> got better. <laughs> It never got better than that. Uh, okay, so should we hop into that one first? Yeah, then? let's. Do, okay. You set it up perfectly. Okay, let's. Uh, so Sean Desmond's uh, self-titled debut album. Uh, it was released October thirtieth, two thousand and two, by Pop and R- It's a pop and R and B album. Yep. Um, it debuted at number thirty eight in Canada and spawned three singles, which were "Get Ready," "Shook," and "Spread My Wings." "Get Ready" was like honestly. I would say a really solid fucking yeah. That's a here's good song. a first single for an artist. That's a good song. I give that one. That one still gets occasionally gets radio play. Same with Shook. Yeah, and Tell it also, me Shook. dude, both of those still get played at, at club nights yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Which like I remember in university, like uh, going to Thursday and, and fucking here and get ready, but like it was come a mix. On the in the club. Come on, come on, get ready. Yeah, yeah. No, those are two really good songs, dude. And and spread my wings also slaps pretty hard. Yes, in in like a in like a ceiling Dijon kind of way. <laughs> uh, okay, it was also certified gold by Music Canada for selling fifty thousand units in that year. Nice. Uh, it's sold way more than that by this point, but uh, it was produced by a shit ton of producers, and they actually have a lot of tie into other uh, uh, artists that we've covered. So uh, Vince, Vinnie Mac, Maria, who worked mm. with Naked Souls and Lil Susie. Nice. Uh, Koya Productions, who were a part of, after this, they were a part of Nelly's Grammy-nominated Suits and Mace's Welcome Back album. Nice. Uh, they are a, a, a duo. Like, they're, they're two different people that make up the, uh, their, like, producing duo. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they, yeah, they've, they've worked with a shit ton of people. Like, uh, you know, obviously Nelly and Mace, but, like, Starting with Sean Desmond and then going through to like I, I think they worked with Nelly Furtado and a few other people like they were they were pretty big producers back then. Um, Perry Alexander, who is known for the 1999 hit mm. "The Hamster Dance." <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, which is fucking wild because <laughs> I just I assumed that that was not made by real people. No, no, that's like Crazy Frog sort of vibes. Yeah, I remember that song. Um, I remember annoying the absolute fuck out of my parents. I and uh, playing it on my MP3 player. I have a fun fact that I'll get into later about this, but like. Uh, so my babysitter uh, yes. gave me a, a, a CD of Sean Desmond's album. Like she burned it, right? And mm-hmm. like printed out like the album cover and everything, though. But there was a secret last track, which was the Hamster Dance. She had no fucking clue that the <laughs> producer of the Hamster Dance was also <laughs> producing shit on this. Nice. Uh, it was also produced by Hugo Lira, 
Thomas Gustafsson, who was uh, a multi-time Eurovision finalist. Nice. Uh, Ricano Lumpkins, who's worked with TLC <laughs> Outcast and George Clinton. Nice. Uh, Rika Nitoni, Chris Perry, mm-hmm. and Kamara Alford, who worked with Iggy Azalea. Okay, nice. It's a w- eclectic range of... Uh Producers, very eclectic range of producers. Uh, the label was Sony BMG Music Entertainment. Now, at 18 years old, Sean Desmond was signed to BMG and started working on this album. So this was like he's young when he's yep. doing this. Um, it featured three top ten singles, obviously, like we talked about, "Shook," "Spread My Wings," "Get Ready," uh, and the single "Spread My Wings" is a cover of an unreleased Vega song featuring Chili of TLC, mm. which is. Pretty crazy. Cool. Cool. Um, his follow up album, Back for More, garnered a Juno Award for Best R&B Recording and uh, of the Year. And then uh, it featured the single Let Go, which was also a uh, hit in Canada. It was played mm-hmm. fucking everywhere. You don't hear that one nearly no. as much, though. He's got that other one, Electric, right? That's yeah. his other big one. Electric, yeah. electric, electric, yeah. electric. Yeah, yeah, that one was like 2011, I think, yeah. when that came out. Like, I was, I was in high school then. I remember thinking then it was weird that he was still around. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, okay, so he released three albums. Uh, okay, so uh, first off, after his second album, BMG dropped him, and then he was signed to Universal Canada. He released three albums between 2005 and 2015, which garnered four singles, like we mentioned, Electric mm-hmm. and Let, uh, Let Go. In 2015, he released the songs Victoria and Obsession, and then was dropped by Universal Music. In 2015, his wife also became ill, so he made the difficult decision to step away from his music career to focus on his family. Uh, this is actually like a super crazy sad story because, mm. like, he was, you know, doing pretty well in in music in Canada specifically. Yeah. Like, he was, you know, touring and and uh, had had a lot of stuff on the radio, but he he stepped away to like help raise his family, you know, take care of his wife. After coming to terms with the end of his music career, he received a call from Canadian country music singer Tebby, who suggested they collaborate on a project called Radio Club. With Radio Club, he released a dance remix of Rick Astley's song, Never Gonna Give You Up, nice. which is pretty dope. And then in July 2022, he performed at Drake's all-Canadian all-stars concert at Ovo Fest, featuring a dozen Canadian <laughs> hip-hop and R&B artists. Sorry, <laughs> what fest? Ovo? It's OVO. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I thought it was Ovo. <laughs> I'm Ovo it, okay? <laughs> Fuck. Ovo Fest. I thought it was Ovo Fest. No. I, okay, well, I'm learning Do you know so. what it stands for? OVO. Do you guess? Only very ocular? <laughs> nope. Try again. Only ventricle ovaries? <laughs> Close. <laughs> One more time. Uh, uh, obsolete vernacular obsession? Nice. It's actually October's very own. Oh, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> OVO Fest. Thank you. Oh, this thanks. is okay, but this is actually pretty cool because after the show, Drake approached him in the hallway outside of the green room, praised him per- for his performance, and encouraged him to c- to continue to make music and to go back into the studio. Nice. Um, a few months later, he released his new single "Maniac," and it was his first single since 2015. And that song, fucking. Slaps, dude. Mm. And okay, I gotta say, his fucking comeback has been pretty fun to watch because he's like genuinely so happy that people are into his music still. Yeah. And like he uh uh there was a Toronto radio interview uh right when Maniac came out where they it was a morning show there and they had been like people that he had known for a long time. And they did a supercut of all of his like radio singles and uh, like with interviews and stuff intercut mm-hmm. from when he was like, you know, 18 until then. And they played it for him without telling him that they were going to do that before the interview started. And he was like fucking sobbing by the, like by the time That's they got cool. the interview because he's like, oh, it means so much that you guys would do all this yeah. for me. Like, I thought I was never going to be in music again. And like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah he seems like a nice guy. He seems like a really yeah, nice guy. Yeah. I'm gonna go to his show in 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 May. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna go. I'm my my fucking seven and eight year old self is gonna be elated. Nice. I'm gonna be fucking over the moon, dude. <laughs> dude I uh yeah no. I also think it's funny uh because okay so when I was in grade four, uh did you ever have like lip sync contests in school? 
not lip sync contest, but I'm familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay, because we talked about it with the Billy yeah, Talent episode. Yeah. So the year before, when I was in grade uh, four, I decided that I was going to do. Uh, a lip sync cover of Spread My Wings. <laughs> and, dude, I had a whole dance routine and everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my stepdad at the time called me a faggot for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, it's <laughs> there were signs, hey? Yeah, dude, yeah. there were fucking pretty obvious signs. I was probably, probably uh, bisexual. Yeah. At the very least. <laughs> Oh, you that's know. cool, man. At least you're, you know, you've stayed true to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, here you are. And man, my my fucking my fucking dance routine to it, I was like <laughs> I, I I was like I was like for fly. Spread my wings and fly away. And I'll voice. never return back to Did you like run or did you like run around the stage and Oh no, I did not do the airplane across the stage. I yeah. stood in one place. I did do a lot of spins though. I did the nice. walk. Ooh. Yeah, dude. I was a little, I was a little, you were, you were a song and dance man yourself. A little song and dance man myself, man. There you go. Um, yeah, so, uh, fucking, that's Sean Desmond's, uh, uh, debut album, and, uh, man, he's coming, he's coming back strong. I'm happy to see it. I want to see more Canadian artists doing what he's doing. Nice, yeah, no, I... He was kind of the Tate McRae of that time. Was he? Yeah. Yeah? I think, I think Tate McRae might be a bit bigger. Well, yeah, but that's just because of the internets. Yeah, I well, had the internet back then too. Yeah, but they didn't have TikTok. It's true. They didn't have YouTube. It's true. They had Napster. Yeah. And LimeWire. That was a big deal. Dude, I loved LimeWire. <laughs> yeah, I used LimeWire. I was never a Napster guy. Uh, yeah, I wasn't either. Yeah. I was I was a LimeWire guy. I remember the day that it fucking closed down because I, <laughs> I, I had dial up internet, dude, and I, <laughs> I, I booted it up yeah. and I was like, I had the LimeWire app on the computer. I was like, I'm going to fucking download i don't even remember what it was it was in like 2010 i think when it shut down i was like i'm gonna download uh new fucking song i think it was the new m&m album i was gonna go fucking find that shit and uh turned it on and then it was a big old flash on the screen that was like this has been shut down for infringing on Mm -hmm. copyright and then I, i i graduated to youtube to mp3 yeah, I did that yeah. too. I did that for a long time. That was freaking tedious, though. Dude, it was very tedious. And then you'd also you'd, have to go back and name your song. You'd also get fucked up because you'd you'd end up downloading one that that was the music video, but it had like a fucking eight minute long intro before you get to the song. <laughs> That's like um, in the the Justin Timberlake. What goes around comes back around. Oh yeah. There's like a whole section in the middle where there's like a car chase and shit. Yeah. And I remember having that downloaded and being like, "What the fuck." <laughs> <laughs> Get back to the song. <laughs> Goes around, comes back around. <laughs> also, speaking of Timberlake, we're doing song and dance man, uh, dance men. Uh, we definitely should do a Timberlake album. Yeah, we should. I happen to know one of the biggest Justin Timberlake fans out there. Do you? Yes. Yes, my very good friend Chase. And really? Yeah, it might be a very interesting episode, especially because of all the the poor press that's been out <laughs> against Timberlake yeah, lately. We don't want to be associated with that. We'll let someone else fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my 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 buddy Chase is literally like. Yeah, he was the biggest Justin Timberlake guy. I thought what would be really funny for an episode is like if we uh, if we linked up with another like music podcast mm-hmm. and we did a crossover episode where we do an episode in their style and they, and they do, do one, one in our, our style <laughs> and then we just released like the one that they recorded of like our style on our channel and the one that we recorded in their style on their channel that's a good idea i think that would be a cool idea that'd yeah. be a neat little crossover that is a cool idea because i i imagine that there's got to be some wacky formats out yeah. there yeah i would say so but Back to back to the Mr. Desmond. Matt, Mr. Desmond. Let's let's get to a little bit of the nitty gritty about this album. Yeah, I think it's got some really strong singles. I think it's got some really strong singles, and I think it's got some <laughs> some filler for yes. sure. But I'll also say I think that the very first song on the album, "Bow," is still like that's a that's a song that I'll put on if I'm working out still. Yeah, uh, after the bow intro. Yeah, the bow intro, and then the sh- the sh- the shook outro. Dude, the bow <laughs> intro is fucking so like. It's it's it dates it. Yeah. Are you ready? It's time. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. It's like one of those like. <laughs> and then it just comes in with that very overdubbed voice. Yeah. Bow. <laughs> it's time. Bow. 
this guy you've never heard before is about to drop some of the best music you've ever heard in your whole life. <laughs> and then he fucking did. That's dude. like that's like the such an early two thousands, like late nineties thing to have like an, an introduction to your album. People yeah. say I'm chasing a dream. Tell me what the <laughs> do you see what I see? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I mean, outside the singles, I can't say I'm like super high on this album, but no, like it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like baby bash. Like I wouldn't listen to the whole album, but I'd listen to, to yes. sugar. Hey, you get so high. You know it's like I mean? one of those, um, yeah. One of those, uh, albums where you, you know, one of those artists where you go to like their top tracks on Spotify and, uh, click on those. Yeah. Yes. And then you avoid everything else. Yes. You avoid the deep cuts, but you know what? I imagine at his concert, he's probably going to just play a lot of the hits. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'd hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to be on the, on the, on the, it's at the palace. Too. Yeah. He probably knows what city and color does like, didn't know. Play the fucking hits, man. Play the fucking hits. Play the hits. Speaking of, uh, speaking of concerts, so I'm going to William Prince next week. Yes. At the, at the, at the, the Jube, which I'm excited about because I, I feel like he even, just he himself is going to be a little bit better of a concert for that venue mm-hmm. than uh, than the Dallas Greed standing there with an acoustic guitar, you know? Yes. Like, I think that because he's got a band and he's not, like, he understands that it's a fucking <laughs> massive theater. Yeah. <laughs> well, well uh, let me know how it goes. We'll talk about it next week. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. actually have a, a William Prince episode written, so we can yes. even fucking yes. get into that next week. We can certainly can. Yeah, that we, might be might be good to do. That might be good to do. Um, all right, so the second album. Oh, well, we gotta rate this. Oh well, I thought we didn't rate the ratings. I think we we'll rate them. We'll rate them. We now. don't go. Th- we don't go through all of the ratings. We just give it a. We just give it an out of ten. Yeah, I would give it a seven out of ten. I'm leaning more towards a six. You're a six. Okay, yes. so a six and a half out of ten. Yeah, that's that's a fair rating for yeah. that. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. We should like write somewhere where all of our ratings are. Yeah, like we should make like a big ass Instagram post with like where we've rated everything. Well, we rate a lot of things around a seven. Uh, at least I do. It's funny you mentioned that. Me and Sarah for Valentine's Day, she got me a poster. It's got like a hundred movies you need to watch in your life. Oh, sick. so we're working through it and we're rating it. And we watched seven last night. And uh, dude, we watched that just like a week ago. Yeah, we watched it last night. Awesome fucking movie, dude. That is a great movie, but also like it was it, the K. Because I had seen it when I was in high school, and I knew that, like, I knew that the twist at the end was that yeah. his wife died, but I, cu- I couldn't remember if in the box it was her head or the fetus. Yeah. And so I was just like, I, I, when that was happening, I was like, oh no, oh no, dude, oh no. Awesome, awesome movie, yeah. Um, dude, Kevin Spacey, fantastic in that movie. Kind of made me realize though, it's like, I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but like. Not the biggest Gwyneth Paltrow fan, personally. She, yeah, she's not a good actress, dude. No, she's okay in this movie, but yeah, like she didn't really say a lot. So you know, <laughs> she, she, yeah, yeah, she, had, she, had, she had like four or five scenes. But yeah, I'm not the biggest Gwyneth Paltrow fan. Yeah, if she opened her mouth, she'd be like, "Buy my pussy scented <laughs> candles." Scoop. <laughs> yeah. <ugh. laughs> Terrible company. Name. But yeah, no, I um, I was talking about that with her. I was like, yeah, like I'm trying to think what else she's in that I've enjoyed. Country strong. Is she in uh, was it Shakespeare in Love or Romeo and Juliet? One of the two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, what's it? Uh, Shallow Hal. Yeah, Shallow Hal. Yeah, with Jack Black. Yeah. Um, uh, Iron Man. Oh right, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, she's in the MCU. Yes. Um, which is the peak of acting performances. That really is. Yes. Just ask Jeremy Allen Wade. <laughs> did you Did you see that? No. He was like he he. he Jeremy <laughs> Allen Wade. What? Jeremy Allen Wade. Yeah. Yeah. Like the the yeah yeah I don't know who he is yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, he he in an interview was like I hate that. The, what is considered the pinnacle of acting nowadays is being in a superhero movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ricky Gervais had a joke about that too. It's like, you know, you're hardly even actors now. You just work out and take steroids and <laughs> put on a tight suit. <laughs> it's like you're getting paid to work out. You're hardly even acting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, fair. Uh, fucking, yeah. Uh, speaking of Ricky Gervais, we've been watching Extras. Nice. Great fucking show, dude. I really like Afterlife. I need to watch that. That's a very, very good I'm kind of making my way through the Ricky Gervais filmography. Well, I had a, I recommended it to my parents and I've never heard my mom laugh harder at a show. Really? But yeah. I was living with my parents. Uh, this is before me and Sarah moved in together last year. I lived there for about a month 
in between places. Uh, and uh, yeah, my, I told my parents to watch the show. My mom, at one scene in particular, just started dying laughing. <laughs> I was downstairs in the basement. I had to come upstairs. I was like, I've never heard my mom laugh that hard in my entire life. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Anyways. Have you seen Louder Milk yet? I haven't seen Louder Milk. I but think you'd enjoy Yeah, it. I probably would. I've seen clips from it. I've seen like the coffee clip with the... And him trying to get hot water from the yeah. cafe. Yeah, I've that, seen that one's pretty good. But there's there's one scene where like uh, he's like making fun of Will Sasso for how he answers the phone. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, you always answer it like with this high pitched voice. It's so stupid. Just fucking talk like a human. And they're like arguing for five minutes. And in the middle of it, Will Sasso gets a phone call and he answers and he goes, "Hello." And then he goes, Damn it! <laughs> it's, it's honestly one of the funniest things. I've yeah, ever I forget seen. the guy's name, but it's the guy from Office Space, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, fuck. What? What is his name? Um. But yeah, he he's like a a, a fucking Kyle Chandler. Type. Yeah, I love uh, I love Office Space. Dude, so Office Space slaps. I will give it a go. Office Space is really good. Anything with Mike Judge doing. I I recommend it. Now speaking of recommendations. Speaking of recommendations, I've recommended this next album because it's one I really love. I'll give a little, uh, you know, little intro like you picture. It's like. 2010. Okay, I'll close my eyes so that I can actually picture it. It's like 2009, 2010. Okay. I have, um, you know, you're in you're in elementary school, mm-hmm. going into junior high. Mm-hmm. Life is uncomplicated. Mm. All you have to think about is if you're gonna have pop tarts or a bagel for breakfast. Mm. You wake up in the morning. You get ready for school. You throw on your Obey or your West 49 t-shirt, your husky Old Navy jeans, <laughs> and your Etney DC shoes, and you're ready to take on the world. Are they are they wide sold? Yes. Nice. You're on your way to the bus, and you plug in your iPod Nano, mm. pop in your headphones. Put First them in generation? Your, um. Yeah. yeah. No. I think it's the. Yeah. It's first gen. First gen. And then you walk down. You're walking down to the bus, waiting for the yellow school bus to come pick you up. And you're like, what am I gonna listen to today? Oh, I heard this song on the radio. Called "Give Me Sympathy." What's What does sympathy mean? <laughs> Google that later. <laughs> <laughs> he downloaded it. <laughs> From YouTube to MP3, MP3 to YouTube to MP3. And then you put it into your iTunes library. Put it into your iTunes library and download it on your iPod. And you listen to it on the bus. And you're like, wow. This singer sounds hot. (laughs) (laughs) This is a great song. (laughs) And later on that week, maybe two weeks later, you go to see a movie. You go to see Scott Pilgrim versus the world. <laughs> and that same same band is being covered by one Brie Larson, who later on you come to dislike, but at this time you also <laughs> think she's she's hot. <laughs> you also think she's hot. <laughs> and then you go, Wow, I like this band. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a journey. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, that one that one that one painted a much different picture. Yeah. Um also I did see Scott Pilgrim versus the World, but before I saw that movie, we we skipped seeing that movie and we snuck into seeing Vampire Suck. Oh. Um which is not an a awful good movie. movie. Yeah. No. A Twilight parody movie and we had to sneak in cuz we were underage. I'm so glad that the parody movie genre has fucking <laughs> Yes. Gone. Holy shit, they got so bad for a while. When Brian Callen is starring in your movies. I think you have problems. <laughs> <laughs> I got knocked up by the 40 year old virgin <laughs> now, and that's super bad. <laughs> uh, trying yeah. to forget Sarah Marshall, and now yes. it's super bad. Yeah, God. yeah. Dude, uh, any, epic movie, yeah. superhero movie. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Man, like I, I <laughs> there's already so much of the internet making fun of like those people. But, yeah, like it's so fucking easy to, dude. I know. It's just like ah, cringy. Yeah, they've uh, they've kind of gone away from that genre. 
Yeah, what was another one? There was a Hunger Games one too. I forget yeah, the name. Yeah, there of was it. the Hungover Games. Yeah, the Hungover Games. Yeah. And then, and and I believe Brian Callen was also in that one. <laughs> and you know, like there's people out there trying to make legitimate independent films, Dude, and this gets bu- gets and, budgets. It's fucking wild because all of those movies had insane budgets. Kim Kardashian starred in one of them. Yeah, I think that's Epic Movie or one of the yeah. ones of that nature. Yeah. Yeah, or like superhero movie or yeah, something. Yeah, no, superhero movies with uh, Drake Bell. Oh, yes, oh, yes. With, uh, Leslie From, N- Leslie Nielsen's in that too, right? Yeah, which is wild because Leslie Nielsen was uh, like he he had great movies that he was in that were spoof movies. Yeah, well, he played like Uncle Ben type character in uh, not the Rice, the Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be I very controversial <laughs> if he played the uh, <laughs> if it was a biopic about the Rice. Leslie Nielsen doing that though would not for some reason. And Gwyneth Paltrow stars as Aunt Jemima. <laughs> <laughs> you need some syrup. <laughs> Here's my goop. <laughs> anyway, so we're so off topic. Let's talk about this album I like. Okay, so the album is Fantasies by, Fantasies by Metric. Yeah. Yeah. Fantasies by Metric. Metric by Fantasies. Yes. Fantasies by Metric. Uh, it is the fourth studio album by Canadian indie rock band Metric. It was released on April 7th, 2009. Mm-hmm. Debuted at number one on the Billboard's top heat seekers and peaked at number 76 on the Billboard 200, which is fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, as of October 2009, it had sold 76,000 copies in the United States, according to the Nielsen Sound Scan. In Canada, it debuted at number 13 on the Canadian Albums Charts and peaked at number six. In Australia, it debuted at number 48. Uh, it was co-produced by Gavin Brown, who we talked about before because he produced the first, like, five mm. Billy Talent albums. Yep. Uh, as well as uh, albums for the Bare Naked Ladies, the Tragically Hip, country artist Doc Walker, uh, and Three Days Grace. And it was also produced by James Shaw of the band and also Broken Social Scene. Nice. Um, the album had six singles coming off of yes. it. Yes. It had Help I'm Alive. Front Row, Give Me Sympathy, Sick Muse, Gold Gun Girls, and Stadium Love. Nice. The album song Stadium Love was named as the official song of the Toronto Blue Jays for 2013. And as the 2014 to 2015 NHL season, it was the goal song for the Edmonton Oilers. Nice. Uh, Which is less cool, but still fucking cool. Still pretty cool. There's some other really good songs in here. I really like Collect Call. Yeah. Um, But... Overall, like "Give Me Sympathy" is probably one of there. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. I think I think "Help" was probably the like because I mean here's the thing. Like, Help, I, I'm alive. My I've heard this album so many times, like songs from the album, yes. because it it's still played on like X ninety two yeah. to this day, right? Um, so I used to hear these songs a lot when I was on the delivery truck, mm-hmm. just fucking driving around the city, being a little fucking trash hipster. Yeah, back in twenty fifteen. Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, like it, it's it's amazing how much this album has held up. Like the the sound has held up. Yeah, they're. I mean, I think they're criminally underrated. I mean, I don't know if it's a Canadian thing. Like they're kind of stuck in the Canadian market. But I don't know. They're they're a really really good band. They got a cool sound, a unique sound. Um, you know, in the mid two thousands, um, they were probably you know one of the the best indie bands in my opinion at the time oh yeah but not even a large even though they weren't large scale and also like probably you know it's pretty cool that there's a female led indie band that sort of vibe I mean there's a couple at the time that were quite big like the yeah yeah yeahs and stuff like that and but Paramore Paramore but yeah they, they were they were making an in, they're making interesting music I think that sounds pretty I mean the stuff on this album sounds contemporary to stuff you would hear totally today and there's some really 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 strong tracks and i think the lyrics are really good too um there's some poignant lyrics that you know stick out um you know such as hard to be soft tough to be tender i love that line um it's pretty easy to be soft honestly yeah 90 percent of my day i'm i'm soft dude i'm soft head to toe (laughs) Soft as boy. (laughs) but yeah i know i love this album i think it's an, an awesome album and it's cool that they're canadian band and they've been doing it for a long time um, and they've been doing it consistently for a long time. So yeah, uh, the album also reached platinum status in Canada, set, selling yeah. over eighty thousand copies 
Well, on April 18th, 2010, the album won the Juno Award for Alternative Album of the Year at the 2010 Awards, as well as the band-winning Group of the Year. Mm. As of 2012, it had sold 500,000 copies. Yeah, so it, it had a, a quite the blow up it, it, after, it, yeah. It fucking, like, it, it was one of those types of albums. Yes. Um, when it comes to critical ratings, any decent music, it sits at a 7.1 out of 10, and on Metacritic, it sits at a 77 out of 100. Mm-hmm. Rolling Stone gave it a 3.5 out of 5. The AV Club gave it a B, and All Music gave it 4 out of 5 stars. Um... Amazon.com listed Fantasies at 11th in its best albums of 2009 list. Nice. Which is crazy because a uh, uh, previous album that we've talked about was also on that list. Uh, Kid Cudi's Man on the Moon. Nice. Yeah. Um, the album was available through their website in vinyl, deluxe hardcore, digital, or deluxe bundle packages. Uh, there was also a limited edition package available at first that was limited to 500 copies which was sold out pretty fucking quickly. Um, Metric opted to self-release the album. Uh, The subsequent mainstream success of the album led the New York Times to use Metric as the central band in an article regarding the shrinking role of major labels in the music industry. So I guess that they used them as the Metric. Nice. Dude, I fucking slapped that. Nice, nice. Good play on words. Um, The album was actually leaked. Ooh, I didn't which know that. caused Metric to push the release date of the album forward one week to April 7th. Um, songs from the album have been featured in several shows, including Grey's Anatomy and in our show. Yeah. You know the one. Which show? The, 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 one, that, the one that we really, really bonded over when we lived in T-Dot. Entourage? Entourage, baby. There you go. It was in Entourage. Uh, metric is uh, so now I'm gonna get into a little bit of the history of the band. Yeah. There was more. There was more uh, about this album than there was with Sean Desmond's. Um, so, Metric is a Canadian indie rock band founded in 1998 in Toronto, Ontario. The band consists of Emily Haynes on lead vocals, James Shaw uh, with the guitar, uh, Joshua Winstead on bass, and Jules Scott Key on drums. Uh, they all play multiple instruments, but mm-hmm. like those are like the main. Like if you were going to nail nice. down what they did in the band in one sentence, that would be what you'd do. Uh, the band started in 1998 as a duo formed by Haynes and Shaw with the name Mainstream, but after a releasing an EP titled Mainstream EP, they changed the band's name to Metric. Nice. Uh, Metric's music style has been. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't know what happened there, dude. Uh, I don't know. Either. Their music <laughs> You didn't even try. You just went, ooh, 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 ooh. You just gave up and started just, ooh, 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 ooh. a stroke? You know what? I might be. Uh, I smell burnt toast. I mean, I always do. Mm. But that's because I keep it in my back pocket. Nice. I want to fuck with people that I walk by on the train. <laughs> they smell burnt toast. They're like, oh, shit, dude. Am I having a stroke? And then they don't go into work. And then they get fired. For thinking they had a stroke, yeah. We go home, and their family is like, "How are we gonna eat?" And like, I thought I was having a stroke. Yeah. And then you know they get a divorce, and they end up moving into a basement suite. Damn. Uh, in Shaughnessy. Shaughnessy in, specifically. In Shaughnessy specifically, so it's a longer commute now. Yeah. Uh, to the, the job they don't have. <laughs> to the job that they don't have, but they they get a job in a kitchen somewhere. Yeah. Um, but they they have to wash dishes because they used to work as a uh, HR person. Nice. Um, but now they're working in a kitchen, um, mm-hmm. doing dishes. Uh, every day he going home on the bus, he puts in his headphones and. Uh, Thinks of the good times, so he puts on Metric's fantasies <laughs> with his old wrinkly hands that are wrinkled from the water. From the water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his face is wrinkled from the steam. Yeah, <laughs> and the stress. And the stress and depression. <laughs> his kids don't talk to him anymore. And then All he was because I walked by with a piece of toast in my back pocket, dude. The butterfly effect. The butterfly effect. <laughs> uh, Metric's music style has been described as indie rock and alternative rock with elements of new wave, post punk, revival, synth pop, and dance rock. Sounds yep. generated by synthesizers are prominent in their songs. Yes. 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 Uh, their sound evolved from the mellow, down tempo style of their early EPs and Grow Up and Blown Away album to their new style of the old world underground Where Are You Now? Uh, then more hard rock on Live It Out to the accessible indie rock of Fantasies and to the grandiose of Synthetica 
and the electronic of Pagans in Vegas, later fusing with their gothic rock and new wave styles for <laughs> Art of Doubt. Some of their songs like IOU, Suck Sexy, and Combat Baby, and Monster Hospital include anti-war messages. Nice. I did not write that. That was that was Wikipedia. I need I need people that was to know. A, that was a mouthful. That was that was a lot. Um, and uh, the band recorded many covers from artists like Bob Dylan, Pink Floyd, Pet Shop Boys, The Church, Death from Above, nineteen seventy nine, which we talked about in yes. our last episode. Uh, Brenda Lee, Tom Waits, Neil Young, Blondie, The Strokes, Morrissey, Tame Impala, and Elliot Smith. <laughs> Uh, they also released many acoustic versions of some of their own songs on deluxe versions of some of their albums. Nice. I would. I just think about this. Like they have some anti-war songs. I would implore a band out there to make a pro-war song. Uh, Toby Keith, rest yeah. in peace. He made a pro-war song. Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue, baby. Nice. Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue. <laughs> He's like he literally that whole song is about flying a helicopter and shooting people in the Middle East. <laughs> Courtesy of the red, white, and blue. red, white, and blue, baby. Respect. Uh, you know what's funny is like, okay, I have to say this. Like, as much as Toby Keith is like, you know, a bit of a goof. Yeah. And people, you know, fucking make fun of him. That dude. How do you like me now? Mm. I I respect so much his just blatant fucking arrogance in that song where he's I'm like, not familiar with the song oh dude it's so good it's about like how this girl wouldn't date him in high school so now he's on the radio and uh. he's like how do you like me now <laughs> now that I'm on my way do you still think I'm crazy standing uh, here today the only one I really know from him is what the cowboy one and uh whiskey for my men and beer for my horses yeah the red the red solo cup red solo cup and he's got the other one spend what a little bit of money we had on with a great skull and may street oh yes forgot about that song that's another good one uh uh trailer hood yeah what's that one beers ago is what it's called beers ago yeah Yeah, uh there's uh i love this bar Mm. uh we got cowboys we got truckers Oh, I know that song, yeah. Blue collar, blue collar fools and suckers. <laughs> yeah, nice. it's a great song. Dude, honestly, his discography is great. I was actually uh, talking to Jack Hackett about this uh, a couple of days ago. Like, <laughs> we were messaging because, cause, like, uh, I was like, uh, like, we were both like, yeah, like, it, like he was a fucking great artist, despite the fact that he was, you know, kind of kind of a, uh, a boob in some ways, yeah. right? But, like, I, I said, I was like, you know. Whenever I think of Toby Keith, I just think this is every CD that was in every divorced dad's truck. Yeah. In the in the early two thousands. Swiping it was between Creed and Nickelback on the rotation. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, my dad. It was it was Toby Keith, Alan Jackson. Uh, there was uh, Bon Jovi. Nice. And Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, have a nice day, or whatever it is, the Bon Jovi yeah. song. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure our audience knew the song. Union went on strike. He's down on his luck. It's tough. It's so, so tough. tough. Gina works a diner all day. <laughs> Working for the man. She brings home her pay for love. <laughs> for oh, love. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta hold on to what you got. It doesn't make a difference if we make it or not. We got each other, and that's enough for love. So give me a shot. Nice. Whoa, we're halfway there. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Ooh, lemon flavored squares. <laughs> Apple and a pear <laughs> Lizard with some hair <laughs> My back hurts from this chair <laughs> Rabbit in a snare 
<laughs> Singing this song with some flair. <laughs> dude, you got the flair to do it. You got the flow to do it now. Oh, get fuck, dude. Get the buzz. That, that, that was fucking. Ready? Yeah. Slow mo. Oh, fuck, dude. That's the clip right there. There you go. Daddy fucks. Anyways, let's rate this thing. Yeah, let's, let's rate, rate this metric album. I'd, uh, fucking, I'd go eight out of ten. I'm I'm going to go eight and a half. Eight and a half? Yeah. Eight, one, two, five out of ten. No I fucks. love this album. Give it a listen. If you guys haven't listened to this stuff before, I'm sure you have. Um, and if you haven't, uh, you're living under a rock. Let us know what you think. Yeah, let us know what you think. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, fucking, dude, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. It's good to be back and back on antidepressants. Good, I'm glad. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. Um, yeah. the, end of, the end of last episode when I was just all fucking depressed. And shit. <laughs> yeah. Just like leaving on the fucking deadest note ever. And then we didn't release an episode last week, so people probably thought, oh, you might have fucking done it. Might have just jumped off a bridge. They were hoping. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Oh, uh, dude. I think it's funny because I I have a joke in my act about about being on antidepressants, right? Yeah. And uh, it wasn't working when I wasn't on antidepressants. <laughs> like it literally was not working. Yeah. And then uh, as soon as I was on them again, it started fucking killing. Oh, there you go. Turns out that uh, all I needed was a little pick me up. A little numb me out. A little numb me out. Well, it's not really a numb me out. It's more of just a. Hey, bad thoughts, get out of my head for a little while. Nice. Like, they're still there. They just don't... Be... Pop up as often. Yeah, it's like... You know what it's like? It's uh, it, when you're not on antidepressants, it's like you didn't turn your ad blocker on mm. and you don't have YouTube Premium. Mm. So it's just like you're watching fucking YouTube and shit's popping up and it's really annoying, right? Yeah. Uh, when you have antidepressants... It's like you've got YouTube Premium, so you don't have to worry about the ads. But if you need something, you'll find it. Yeah, I have YouTube Premium. What does that mean for me now? Uh, it means that you don't get ads at all. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, and you can turn your screen off. I know, but what does that mean in this metaphor? It, it means that like the ads are the depressing. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not, I just have YouTube Premium. Yeah, so then you don't with have that, to... Without the ending depressants. Yeah, so like, good good for you, man. Some of us have to pay for it, okay? I know, I'm just joking. Not everyone's got that fucking... Good... I actually don't pay for it, so... <laughs> <laughs> I get it for free. Really? Uh, yeah. How? In-laws. Ah, uh, Yeah, fancy. yeah. Yeah, they fuck. Um, okay. Uh, well, that was our that was our episode. Yeah, thanks uh, for watching, everybody. If you made uh, it this far. Yeah, if you made it this far. Uh, before we get off, I do want to mention uh, the dates again. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, March fifth at the Laugh Shop here in Calgary. Uh, March twenty second, Cafomedy, and then uh, the Rec Room. Uh, so there's two shows that day. Uh, April 12th, I'm in Jasper. April 13th, I'm in Airdrie. And April 17th, I'm in Grand Prairie. Come on out to a show. Uh, I'm going to have details soon about... Uh, I'm going to be recording. Uh, Let's go. In May. So Let's go. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll announce that when, uh, when, when that's all confirmed. Hell yeah. And then, then we'll fucking... Then we'll have something real big to fucking talk there, about. There we go. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Then we should rate my album. When it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> I should have I should have you and a guest actually on to rate the album. Yeah, that'd be fun. That would actually be really fun. And make you sit there and suffer and don't give you a mic. Yeah, I don't have a mic the yeah, whole time. Yeah. I just sit there watching. <laughs> I'm just like I wish that I could fucking contribute to this. Yeah, that's a good um, idea. Yeah, uh, if you if you like the podcast, uh, rate and subscribe. Uh, uh, subscribe on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Follow us on all the other podcast apps. Yeah. Uh, like us. Also, if you download the podcast, like if you if you uh, actually download it, it does better for our numbers. I there you go. It. So please don't just stream it. Download it. Nice. I'll start doing that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Cheers. guys. Anal contusions. <laughs>